Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Welcome to the video where if you follow me on Instagram, we are finally going to be sitting down and testing out the new Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation, and I am so excited. I mean, obviously, today's video is a bunch of first impressions, but this one right here is one that I have had so many requests for because I put up a reel, uh, I want to say it was last week sometime, which, by the way, if you, hello, plug, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please go do that. It's linked down below, and I'm trying to hit 10,000 followers. I post a ton of content, makeup-related, obviously. We have plus-size fashion, and there's just always something going on, so make sure you check me out. Again, everything is linked down below, and I post a ton, like five to seven-ish days a week, and I post in the stories constantly. I do unboxings and just all the good things, so again, make sure you follow me, but um, I posted over there a week ago a reel on that, just doing like a first impression application, just to see if you guys were interested in it, show you the, you know, initial coverage and stuff like that, and oh my word, okay, when I tell you the amount of interest coming from the DMs, the comments, everybody wanting to know more information on it, wanting to hear about the wear, and just all the good things, and I also have some information on this bad boy, the Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation from Fenty, uh, because this is another one I've been wearing and testing out, and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts, application. We're really going to get into it today. Again, some things I've worn a little bit, some things I haven't worn at all, but it doesn't matter because we're going to go there, and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I just lost my voice. Go there. <clears throat> Whoops. Of course, before we do that, I just want to introduce myself really quick for anybody that's new here. My name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Again, welcome to the channel. If you're new, I do put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they usually go up right around like 7, 7.30-ish a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And as I already said, I would really appreciate it if you take a second, follow me on Instagram. That will, of course, be linked down below, as will, by the way, all the makeup that we talk about today and my outfit. I can't link the necklace because this I brought, bought at a little shop when I was out in Colorado like a year plus ago. Um, but I will link this. It's from Torrid, and oh my god, you guys, the reels. The reels I am working on over on Instagram. Oh, you just wait. Okay, this whole outfit is just it's the best thing in the world, okay? So make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'll have this link down below. This is just a tank top from Torrid. It'll be linked as well. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead, though. Let's zoom the camera in and let's get started. <laughs> I can't help myself. Ever just look down and realize you have a bruise? I have a bruise on my leg. I kid you not. It's like this big. Where did it come from? I don't know. Hello? Apparently I ran into something large, like, I don't know, a car. All right, so going in first here with primer, I almost messed up and just used my Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas, but then I remembered I got this little ditty, y'all. I picked up the butter stick and I'm so excited. This is new from Beauty Bakery and this is their The Butter Hydra Silk Primer. And I just, oh my God, I love this packaging so much. I can't tell you, I can't even express, okay, how much I love butter. I just think butter is the spice of life. Well, it's, I mean, it's not spicy. Um, I mean, I mean, it could be if you add spice, but I digress, okay. The moral of the story here, I just love butter. I'm a northern Michigan lady, and we in the good old northern MI, okay, we just get down on that butter. We get down on that butter all up on our toast, our ever, pretty much everything we eat, butter. So anyways, butter primer. Uh, let's get into it here. Where Hello, first of all, how do I open? Second of all, what is it, what's it going to do? Hello. I have so many questions. All right, so I got the packaging open, and can we just talk about how cute this is? It looks like an actual butter stick. You guys, I am deceased. This is so, so freaking cute. Um, and on the side of the packaging here, it says this is a lightweight hydrating primer that provides your skin with a smooth canvas and extends the wear of your makeup. Up, obviously, apply prior to makeup application. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and go in with it here. I'm just going to roll up, <laughs> roll up my stick of butter. And I'm just gonna take this and concentrate it on the one side first, just so I can kind of do like a compare and contrast. And then once I have that on, I'm just gonna lightly kind of tap it in and kind of uh, press it into the pores in a circular motion just to help everything be nice and smoothly pressed. So when I first applied this, I felt like it left me kind of a weird little white cast, but once you like rub it in and give it a second, that does dissipate. So if you notice that the color is a little bit off, um, it, it just takes a second, I think, to warm up to your skin. But I actually really like the way that it looks right in this area. I noticed that it actually, for being more of a hydrating kind of primer, it does help take away the little bit of shine that I naturally naturally get on this part of my face, and it helped kind of refine the pores a little bit. Not not a lot, um, but just a little bit right through here. It looks nice and soft. Okay, let's go ahead and do the other side now that I know nothing treacherous is going to happen. All right, so I did go ahead, obviously, and I zoomed the camera in really far because I want you guys to get um, as much information and a good view of this foundation as possible. That way you can really see, you know, the coverage, the smoothness, and all the good things. And this is the Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation, and I am using it in the shade CN08 Linen. I actually went ahead too, and I pulled up all the specs on the um, Alta website. That way we can take a look at that and kind of go through some of the claims. So let's go ahead and start off with the 
uh, who it's for section on here. It says that this is for dry combination, oily combination, and oily skin. And it says that it is a clinical serum foundation with broad spectrum SPF, and it is their first clinical foundation with three serum technologies. This breakthrough oil-free formula includes hyaluronic acid, salicylic acid, and vitamin C plus to leave bare skin looking even better. But it also goes on to say that this is a weightless medium to full coverage liquid foundation with 24 hour wear that helps visibly improve your skin instantly and over time and that it is, it is packed with good for skin ingredients like the hyaluronic acid, sal salicylic acid, and vitamin C. Um, and then it also has Clinique's exclusive dark spot fighting molecule UP302, which I'm assuming that's some sort of like in-house proprietary blend based on how they wrote it. Um, and yeah, it's just supposed to give you more even smoother and hydrated skin. It also says too that it's going to give you a satin finish, I think is what it said. And it is retailing for $42 and it comes in 42 different shades. And then obviously this is the packaging. I'm sure you've seen photos of it at this point, but I personally really love this. I think it's super cute. Like presentation wise, I love it. I love that it looks like a cute little egg. And I really like that the cap comes off. You have this nice little pump right here. Um, so just overall for me, glass packaging, super adorable. Love this. So I want to start off first with this foundation, just talking about the shade range because I was actually really disappointed and I'm going to go ahead and put a picture up on the screen. That way you guys can see the full shade range, at least from what I'm seeing between their website and Ulta. It doesn't look like there's more on one website than another, like it was a partial release to Ulta, but there's more on Clinique or anything. It looks like these are the only 42 shades available. And I was really, really disappointed because honestly, this shade range looks more like out of 42 shades, it's like 35 shades of beige. And I do not understand. I do not understand why that is the case. And obviously this isn't um, like my thing to talk about or really expound on. So I'm not going to really get into it. I'm going to leave that to somebody that actually can speak on it appropriately. But I guess my thing is just why? Why not make it? Why not? Why, why if you're going to release a foundation that's actually beautiful and that looks great on the skin and has all these great benefits, why not come correct. Like, why why, why wouldn't you do that? That's my thing. And I don't care who it is. I don't care what it is. You're coming out with this great thing. Like, honestly, guys, I'll just say it, okay? It looks beautiful. I love the texture. The coverage is beautiful. Like, the whole, the whole experience is great. But why not come correct with it and make it something that everyone can enjoy? That's all I'm going to say. So again, moving on past that, um, there were a couple of other things that I had questions on. I'm just going to add a little bit more. I missed like this entire jawline section. Um, but I just want to add a couple of things because I have had questions um, over on Instagram wanting to know questions like the wear and the way that it looks on the skin and all of those type of things. Um, so I just want to, you know, kind of run through and answer your guys' questions on it because at this point I have worn this foundation I want to say for about a week because I really wanted to get a good feel of it um, with like different primers and different powders and stuff like that. And I would say for me, this right here is about where I leave it. Um, it presses into the skin absolutely beautifully. I mean, you can see I'm going to try to stay still here. But you can see in terms of the texture, the smoothness, everything about this foundation is actually really, really beautiful. Like the, the overall smoothing quality that it gives to my skin is top notch. I really do love the coverage. I would say it's more of a high medium coverage. It does a great job at covering like my more intense redness, but it doesn't cover them all the way, all the way like super duper full coverage. But it also does have a nice amount of buildability, of, of buildability, build, 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 Bob the Builder. Uh, but it does build, moral of the story. Um, so you can work with it. Now, I find for me personally that I actually like to leave it at a decent, like like a standard high medium coat that you get right from the jump. And I prefer to leave it there. And then when I go in with my concealers and whatnot, those kind of cover up the rest of the way. Um, but as far as the coverage goes, it's absolutely beautiful, number one. So number two, I would say as far as the finish goes, I do agree with the description that it has more of a satin finish, but I would actually say satin leaning skin-like. Like if I um, go through right now, obviously, and I left it as is, this is definitely more of a satin. It has a little bit of that light high hydration to it. But if I go through and I set this all the way through to the end, which of course you guys will see here in a bit, um, I do find that it looks much more of a natural satin. So once you go through, powder it, add the rest of your, you know, stuff on top of it, um, it really does just look a lot more like your skin. And it kind of just gives your skin uh, like that polished satin look, if that makes sense, which I really like. I love that kind of finish. While I keep going through and talking about this, I'm just going to go in next with my concealer. This is still that uh, Mega Last concealer, the Incognito from Wet n Wild. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead. This is in the shade Fair, by the way. Now, another thing that I've been asked a lot is obviously, Paige, how does it wear throughout the day? I have combo-leaning oily skin. You guys wanna know about that through the T-zone. You wanna know if it transfers because of the masks and things like that. But what I will say is this, okay? If you are someone like me and you have oil um, that comes through your skin, the first thing you need to know is that this foundation is not going to stop it. This is very much so a, as I said before, like a natural-esque foundation. 
And because of that, it's really not going to, um, it's not going to stop that level of um, oil from coming through your skin. It doesn't, it doesn't have like that built-in matte barrier that we've seen with some of the other ones, like the one from NARS or the one from Too Faced, the matte one right here. Stuff like that actually has, you know, kind of that built-in um, thing in it that helps keep your oils at bay, and it really just helps to fight it off. It's kind of meant to absorb it and block it at the same time, whereas a foundation like this one is meant to give you more of that natural, skin-like, but better kind of feel. And also, too, really quick, I'm going to go ahead and set my under eyes and my T-zone with the um, one size setting powder here from Patrick Star. This foundation is definitely one that does transfer. I find that on me, regardless of primer, powder, you know, again, everything being the same, it does um, move around a lot under the mask, especially right in this region, which for me tends to be like my more oily area. So I'm not super surprised by that. And then just too, like one, one little piece of anecdotal evidence. I know it's not specifically a mask, but I think it's the same type of concept. Concept, um, because I have worn a mask and I noticed that kind of transfer. But another thing that I noticed too, um, like by the end of the day, because obviously if you, you follow me on Instagram, you know I take my dog out throughout the day, right? And it's northern Michigan here, so I've got a jacket that zips all the way up into my damn forehead. Well, I mean, it zips up to right here. Uh, but the other day, I was actually wearing this foundation, obviously testing it out, and I zipped it all the way up, and I noticed that when I took my jacket off, obviously I unzipped it as normal. I was outside with it zipped up, talking to my dad, you know, whatever. And when I unzipped it, my entire chin right here was all kind of messed up. It was kind of, you know, sloughed around. It was patchy. And there were certain areas where the foundation had actually come off completely. I just wanted to throw that out there. Like, again, if you're like me and you're wondering about that aspect of it, like if it'll be able to really hold up under things or, you know, that agitation. Again, I don't think this is going to be that type of foundation, at least not in my opinion. I think this foundation, moral of the story, is really nice. I have powder right now just through the under eyes and um, through the T-zone. Nothing right here. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful foundation. But I don't think it's going to be that foundation if you need something that can hold up under the abrasion. I think that that'll make the difference. And then another thing too, random side note, somebody over on Instagram asked me why this was so expensive and I, if I had to surmise, okay, because I obviously don't know, I don't work for Clinique, but if I had to guess why, because this one retails for I think $42 and the other Clinique foundations retail for like right around $30, $32, right in that range. Um, so it is obviously, you know, like $10, 10 to $12-ish more. Um, so if I had to guess though what the reason was, I would say it's because they there is like different type of technology in here. Like there's um, a serum aspect to this where they have incorporated not just foundation, but also a level of skincare. You know, it's got the hyaluronic acid, the salicylic acid, the vitamin C. And so if, again, if it were just me and I were surmising, I would say that that's probably the reason the pricing is different um, just because it has a lot more active ingredients that are going to last beyond the foundation stage. So there is an element of skincare in it. And my guess would be that drove up the price some. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Don't hate me. I'm just guessing. All right. Now from there. Let's go ahead. I feel like I just talked for an hour and a half on that friggin' uh, Clinique foundation. I'm so sorry, but I had a lot of questions that you guys wanted answered. So I hope that helps. If you have any other questions, you can leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. But that's pretty much all I have gleaned on uh, while I was wearing it this far. But I want to go in now and set the rest of the face. And for that, I'm going to use the new Fenty foundation powder. I'm using this in the shade 150 and I'm going to apply this just with my big old fluffy flower beauty brush here. Just kind of get in and then lightly Pop, pop, pop it all over. And this is actually one that I also have some information on, and I'm going to try to make this part a little bit more brief. But um, this foundation for me, I did use it over on Instagram in a reel, and just as like a, a base application by itself to see what the coverage was like. And I would say for me personally, I think the coverage on this when you're using it alone is a little bit disappointing, especially if you have like more redness, more hyperpigmentation. I mean, yes, you can build it to like a decent medium-ish coverage, but it's nothing to me where I felt like, like the, the coverage built quickly. I feel like, if anything, this powder had a much slower build than I'd anticipated. I think it was just for me, like, I expected it to have a little bit faster build to it because it's Fenty, and I, I don't know. I just, I think I expected something different. But what I will say, obviously, you know, like I said, not being a huge fan of how long it takes to build, um, I think that that's all personal preference because what I've noticed for me is that when it comes to foundation powders, I tend to put them in two different camps. I have um, ones like, say, the MAC Pro Longwear Foundation Powder, I think is what it's called, and that is a beautiful foundation powder. It gives you a fantastic amount of coverage, and it's just a really full, robust foundation powder. And that one is the type of foundation powder I can use by itself and get a really nice, seamless look, a ton of coverage, and it's great. Whereas with ones like this one or the, um, 
the one from Too Faced or the other one that I use from It Cosmetics, those are the ones that I find work better almost as a setting powder but with more coverage. And I feel like with this one specifically, that is 100% what I would recommend this for because you guys, I am obsessed with the way that this sits on my skin. It looks so freaking beautiful. It has the most amazing silky ass texture. I love it so much. Like I have worn this over so many, you literally can't even see it on my hand. It's almost the perfect shade for me. Um, but I have worn this so many times. I've used it to set a ton of different foundations. And I think what makes this so magical is that it does give you a really nice amount of coverage. Again, if you're putting it over like an existing one, like I just did, you get a fantastic amount of coverage, but it doesn't look thick or heavy or cakey because the middle of it is very, very fine. As far as the texture goes, it layers up and presses in beautifully. What I love about that too, is that this is marketed as a soft matte foundation powder. And I absolutely like 100% agree with this. I feel like the softness that's built into it again with that fine mill and just the texture of it overall, it doesn't look really intense on your skin. It looks like you have a nice light, but still a soft matte kind of blurring effect going on. And it's just super duper beautiful. And personally, I've actually really enjoyed <laughs> the combination of these a lot. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there again, just kind of my information. I do think it's beautiful. I don't necessarily love it, love it just on its own as a foundation powder, but I do really like it as an all over set. I think it looks amazing and I love the texture. And I know this might look and sound a little funny. I don't know. I don't know how the mic is going to like this, but I wanted to give you one more shot before I zoom out the camera, just so you could see the texture because it actually looks really beautiful, especially around my mouth. Oh God, looks so good. This is like a big trouble area for me and it looks so freaking smooth right here over all my texture looks smooth. Oh my God, everything's so smooth. Now, really quick too, I did pick up off of the Charlotte Tilbury website. This is completely random, I know. Um, but I picked up some of the Magic Lip Oil Crystal Elixir and I have it in the shade Berry Bliss. And it says that this is a lip conditioner by day and a lip mask by night. But I wanted to use this in today's video just to show you. I was talking about it over on Instagram. I ordered it at the same time that I picked up their new, I think it's their hydrating lipsticks or whatever. You'll see them here in a little bit. And I honestly too really like the shade of this. You can see it's just just a nice light berry pink color, but I think it's one of those shades that would be perfect if you wanted to do a light lip liner, throw this on, or even just add this kind of like as a purse gloss, but an oil that might help keep your lips a little more hydrated than a gloss. Um, this is just a really nice texture, so I wanted to throw it out there. Also, next up here, I don't have anything new for the next few steps, so I'm going in with my Sun Club Matte Bronzer from Essence. I just talked about this actually in my year-end, if you missed it, my year-end drugstore favorites, which I will link right up here. It's just a really beautiful bronzer from the drugstore store. I really like it. I've been using it a lot lately. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw some of this on and I actually, I'll be just kind of buzzing through these products. I'll still show them to you as I go um, because I figure why not? Like I'm here anyways. Now I know everybody feels differently about this and you can leave it down in the comments. Do you guys like it? Like if I'm just going to buzz through say the next like four products, would you rather I go off of camera or that I show you them like really briefly, just kind of throw it in there while I do it? Does that make a difference? Do you not care? I just wanted to, you know, kind of get your guys' feel on it, but God, isn't that bronzer just beautiful? Uh, even if it shows up, by the way, if it looks orange on here, it's not orange in real life. Uh, it's just my lighting. Oh, well, there went that brush, not in it. All right, so for blush, I'm taking the Nabla Cosmetics blush here in Lola. And this is actually a blush that I talked about in my year end for my high end side, which I will link up here. Did a full video, and y'all, if you go watch that video, you better grab a snack, a drink, and uh, probably a change of clothes, because it'll take a while. It's a long video, but it is full of some of the best recommendations. Ooh. And then next up, I'm just going in, brightening up the face with my Lift and Luminate powder, my number seven Lift and Luminate powder in the shade light. Just kind of throw this all over, let it sit there whilst I do my brows. And I know, I know it looks like a lot right now, but trust me, this powder, oh my God. You know what? Let's just snatch her a little bit more. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, give me that good little eye lift. Whoop, ah, right off to the side. Mm -hmm. Snatch her down, make her less round. <laughs> all right, so next up here, I'm just going in with my uh, brow cream. This is in the shade Brunette from M Cosmetics. I'm getting this nice and worked through the brows as per usual. And I actually really love the handle on this. I know I've talked about it before, but y'all, I got these big ass man hands, okay? I could palm a basketball and it's really hard sometimes to hold on to all the little dainty things. And, um, I, cause I don't got, I don't got little dainty hands and it's nice to have something that, you know, I can hold it comfortably. I can tuk tuk tuk. I can get it through here. And I love the little wand on this cause it's so teeny tiny. It gets in here with my little sparse brows and it just, you know, fills them in ever so gently and makes them look nice and floopy. And I like that. All right. And then next up I'm going in with my precisely my brow pencil in the shade 3.5. 
just using this to lightly feather in some color, which we oh, oh so desperately need on the tail of these brows that are so sparse and so wispy. All right, so now with the brows done, finally, let's go ahead and move on to the eyeshadow palette that I picked up for today, which is actually from M Cosmetics, and this is their new Faded Clementine palette, and I just really, really loved this color story. And for anybody that's not familiar, I was actually obsessed with their first eyeshadow palette. This was the original Divine Skies palette, and so I was really interested to see if going from this one to the new Faded Clementine, I was really interested to see if they kept the formula the same, how does it blend, and all that kind of stuff, because these shades, like these in this one specifically, um, were really great. It was an amazing palette just for everyday use, and I thought maybe for the winter months, this could this could also be great for everyday use. So let's go ahead here. I'm actually going to swatch all of these. Oh, they feel fantastic. These matte shades. There's three matte and three shimmer, and oh, oh, oh those look wonderful. Okay, you guys, so I just went ahead and swatched all of them, and I need you to understand, okay, on a spiritual level, um, I think I'm dying right now over these shimmers, but this goldy bronze one on the end, I feel like there's something different about it. Like, it has almost like a hint of, like, warmth or this burgundy. There's something in there that just looks so different and so unique, or may maybe it's just that it's up next to these shades. I don't know, but, like, <laughs> this palette is calling my name. All right, now, first up, moving on, I'm just going to prime my lids with a little bit of that same incognito concealer. But also, by the way, this nail polish, I always get questions on my nail polish, and I forget to mention it, but it is almost exclusively always Lights Lacquer, uh, which is Kathleen Lights brand, and I will have it linked down below. This is the shade Emerald, and I am obsessed with this color. I wear it all the time. It's so gorgeous. All right, now with that on, I'm actually going to start off on this orange shade here. I'm going to take that on a Refer 01 brush, which by the way, I do have a link for these brushes down in my description box, and if you have not checked them out, my God, do I recommend it. Go to the concept store. Um, their brushes are so, so freaking fantastic. Oh, and this color, ugh, this color is everything, and like, look at how well it just blends out, and I know that a lot of people talk about these brushes, and normally I'm the first one to be like super skeptical, so if you are too, I get it, but these brushes, you guys, are so nice. Now, I'm just taking this and running it right through the inner portion of the crease right here, and I'm gonna leave the outer V for, I think, this deeper shade, this next one, um, this one right in the middle here, because I think doing that gradient is going to be really flattering to the color story. Now, normally, I don't think I would take it quite so intense, like right on this inner portion, but I think I am going to go in, well, I mean, at this point, I'm pretty much committed um, to doing a cut crease today, guys. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go in. It's been so long since I've done any sort of, like, intense, in-depthy kind, of, um, kind of look, so I want to do something a little bit more pizzazzly today. And now I'm just going in here and color switching that same brush because I love the profile of this um, for going in for the outer V as well. So I'm going to go in, like I said, here with this pink shade and that is going to go squarely on the outer corner and I'm going to blend it in with that orange. Ooh, that gradient though, oh yes, honey. Now I'm making sure with this color that I'm getting it, you know, nice and tight up into my pocket right there um, on the outer V. That way it does kind of give me the optical illusion of a lift versus pulling my eye shape down. And then still going in with that same brush, I'm just switching it off one more time. And I'm gonna go in now with the darkest shade, the darkest matte shade in this palette here. I'm taking that just very, very carefully on just this outer V pocket. You can see me kind of creating that lift. And it'll be perfect to have that already laid in place for when I go in and do the cut crease. All right, so that looks absolutely freaking stunning, you guys. I am obsessed with that gradient. So I am going to end up going um, on the lower lash line with those same three matte shades and doing the orange, the pink, and then that dark that dark shade on the outer V right here. But I'm actually going to do that last so I can move on to cutting the crease up top, kind of kind of keep this part moving. And I'm going to go in with just some of my incognito concealer, and I'm taking this on the Lunar Beauty LBE4. It's just a teeny little small flat brush. And with that, I'm going to begin the daunting task here of doing my cut crease. Those look relatively even, guys. I think they do. I think they look pretty good. And I think too, going in, I'm just kind of wiping this brush off on my hand, and I think I'm going to start off and actually use all three of these shimmers, and I'm going to go from this shade to this one to this one on the outer V, and just kind of fan them all out across the eye. And I, like I said, I'm going to start off with the lightest one on that same Lunar Beauty brush here. This one actually has like the perfect profile, I think, for really getting into this inner corner and still helping me trace that line. And then next to that, just with my finger, I'm tapping on the next deepest shade um, in the palette out of the shimmers. 
And I'm gonna leave a little bit of gap at the top just so I can go in with the brush, but I do prefer applying shimmers um, with my fingers. So I'm just applying it to the bulk of the area here, leaving that space at the end, which actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and do that right now too. Just grab the last shimmer, which is that um, pinkish purple, you know, dark maroon shade here. And I'm just throwing that on the last part of the eye. And then I can go in again with the brush and clean up that edge a little. And you know what? The more that I look at this, I might actually want to do something maybe a little bit more even um, up along that edge because I don't like that I'm losing some of that definition. Like I went through all the work to do a cut crease and I really want that to stand out a little bit more. So I'm, I might have to figure something out there. But for right now, I just want to go in and fill in this area, make sure it's nice and clean. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, um, now that I'm looking at this a little closer, I'm gonna go in with the LBE7 from Lunar Beauty, and I'm gonna go back in with this orange shade. This is just a teeny tiny little flat brush here, and I'm gonna use this to trace the um, original cut crease line with the matte shade, and this will also help to give it a little bit more definition. Just kind of creates that optical illusion that there's you know a little bit more of a line there so you know what i'm actually going to leave that there i was going to go in and add um like some sort of like defining glitter or something along that cut crease but i really like it right where it's at i think that the matte added you know just that touch that i needed to differentiate the cut crease and it actually added a little bit more depth than i had intended which i, I really like so i'm just going to go in now because i like the definition along the cut crease and i'm going to finish up the lower lash line just like i said before taking um, the same three shades just, you know, along here, same order. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I did not expect this. Like, I haven't done a look that was this, I don't know, intense, this deep, this anything in quite some time. And this is so, so unbelievably beautiful. I really love this color story. All right, so I just was double checking and I do not have any other new makeup until we get to lips. So I'm gonna go ahead, buzz through a couple more products, starting off with setting my face for highlight. I'm just gonna use my Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray here. And then for highlight, I'm actually going to go in with this Shantikai Duo here. This is their Duo Chic Illuminator, and does it say, oh, it's in the shade Rose. And I'm going to take, obviously, just this top shade right here on my Wayne Goss 24S, and I'm going to highlight the face as per usual here. Okay, yes ma'am, we see you, we hear you, you are getting all of the attention you deserve. All right, and then one more little spritz here. I'm going to use the Hourglass Soft Focus Veil Setting Spray. Just a little bit, right? And then of course for mascara, I'm just gonna be here building up a few coats of my Maybelline Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect. You guys know me, I love to build up them lashes, make them look nice and dramatic. All right, so now with the eyes finally finished up, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off with lips. And I wanted to take a second, cause I did pick up, I think I said this at the start of the video, um, I picked up the new Hyaluronic and Happy Kiss Color Balms from Charlotte Tilbury. But I want to also go ahead and swatch and play around with the new lip cushion from M Cosmetics. This is the one that they released in Faded Clementine that matches the palette. All right, so here's the shade again, it's Faded Clementine. That's that's actually really beautiful. If you were to go in with a lip liner type moment and blend this in, ooh, kind of like I did on the eyes, maybe do like a pink lip liner and then this kind of blended in the center. And then moving in to the other ones. Now these I did swatch, I believe over on Instagram as well, I want to say, but these are the newest launch from Charlotte Tilbury and I just really, really loved the look of these. I'm super in, oh, I love that. <laughs> so satisfying. Uh, but I'm really into stuff like this right now, the stuff that's going to give me nice amount of color, but also that hydration. This is in the shade Passion kiss. Oh, this is super beautiful. And then next to that, this one has more of a burgundy tone to it. This is in Happy Berry. And the final one actually is almost the exact same shade as the Faded Clementine. This is in Happy Peach. And I actually think all of those are beautiful. <laughs> Ironically enough, all of them would actually work for this eye look. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pause really quick and line my lips first. This is with the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I think this is Pillow Talk 2, right? Yeah, medium. And I'm going to take this one. Go ahead and swatch it for you so you can see the shade. But I actually picked this pencil up in a set that they have, and I'll have all of this linked down below. But I grabbed this in a set with that lip oil that I used a little while ago. And so I wanted to go ahead and incorporate this. I really love the color, and I think it'll work really nicely with, uh, with this eye look. And I think over top of that, I'm actually gonna go in with the shade Happy Berry, because I really love that berry tone. I think it'll match, but I'm not gonna go in like super heavy with it. I'm just gonna blot it right in the center here. Mm, yes, that way it's not like an overly intense application, but I still get that same tone all over the lip. And you know what, just for a little fun here, just a little extra pizzazzle, 
I'm taking a little bit of the orange one, the Faded Clementine from M Cosmetics, and I'm just putting that right in the center, just to kind of give that nice little golden undertone. Okay, so like legit, that might be my new favorite color combo. All right, you guys, with that, obviously the full video is done. This is how everything came together. And I wanted to mention, hence why I'm holding on to it here, I did go ahead and throw on this NYX Epic Wear Liner. This is in the shade Deepest Brown. And I put this on just the upper and the lower waterline. I just wanted to mention it, just in case you're wondering, Paige, how did your eyes get so nice and framed out? It's the liner. And then of course from there, I just wanna you know throw out there this entire full face, you guys, I am absolutely obsessed. So like over the last um, two and a half hours, I've been filming, okay, these videos take a hot minute to do. And over the last two and a half hours that I've been doing this, I just keep looking at it. Like the eyes as they got done, the complexion looks stunning. Just everything I feel like pairs so beautifully together. And I am obsessed. So I'm going to go ahead and throw up the up close. That way you guys can get a look at that. And um, I mean, obviously I've already said it. I love the way this turned out. I will of course have to play around with um, a little bit more that Beauty Bakery primer because only using it once. I mean, yes, I love the way my makeup looks right now, but I don't have any way to judge if that's going to be, you know, good or bad going forward with like my oily skin. If it's going to cause too much of a slip or if it's just going to be pore filling, I'm not sure. But I will say for right now, again, everything looks gorgeous. I love the way, love, love the way that these tones look, especially with this lipstick. Like I just feel like everything overall looks so cohesive. And when I tell you coming into this video, okay, I was not prepared to come out of it with this much intensity. Like I, I truly thought I was going to come out with like a nice, you know, light kind of berry or orange type eye, which I mean, I did, but I definitely came out with like the darker version and I'm not mad at it. Like the, the colors in this are just so rich and so beautiful and they just really work together. And I think that for me, that's kind of the beauty of like the, these little palettes that M Cosmetics, when they curate them, I think they do such a great job curating palettes that um, all of the shades really do work together in a way that you can get use out of every single item in that palette. Like it's not just where, you know, oh, you get six shades, but you're not going to use this one or that one. Like every Every single shade in here is unique and beautiful and they work alone or they all work together and I think that you can get the same amount of use out of all of them which is really beautiful but honestly for me that's it you guys I don't have anything to add and I just want to say I really hope that this was helpful um, like the info that I had on this one and then obviously the Fenty powder as well I tried to give you everything I could think of answer as many questions as I could um, but you know I just hope it was helpful I know that this was kind of a different video like in terms of how it was structured versus my normal ones but I just wanted to give you as much info as I could so I hope that that's cool I hope you guys like the video, you can give me, of course, all of your thoughts down below. Of course, too, like I said before, if you want to check out any of this, I will have all the makeup listed down below. What I'm wearing will be listed down below. And uh, also, yeah, you can subscribe, turn on your post notifications. I almost forgot my own little plug, toot toot. Um, but if you haven't subscribed, please do that before you leave. Again, I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can follow me on Instagram. There's a ton of content over there. I check in on the daily and uh, yeah, it's just a fun time. So make sure you do all the things. Everything will be listed in the description box. And I hope that you guys all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Um, I'm sorry. What time? Oh, I've definitely been filming this for three hours. Oh, somebody lost track of time while she was blending out that eyeball, didn't she? Just blending it vigorously, Lee Lee, and she forgot what time it was. Oh, yeah. That's the good shit. But I do want to know where I put my sponge. Where did I put my sponge? Feels like I got something in my eyeball. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where my tweezers are. Ooh, don't know what that was. Why, do you have a new primer? Wait, golly gee willikers, I have the butter stick. Okay, it's okay. Okay.